Hello everybody, and I'm going to try to show you guys how to animate like spinning things like propellers or turbine blades or something that spins all the time in animation. I'm going to try to make it quick because I only have a half hour till like my lunch break finishes up. So, yeah, I have to go back to my day job, but I'll try to do this real quick. So let's delete the cube that Blender starts out with and let's import a mesh because like when most people get aircraft models of course it's going to be in the most common format so if you're doing or if you modeled outside of Blender or bringing in a model that's from outside of Blender it's likely going to be an object so we'll import an object here I have my vehicles and I have a fairly basic canard plane error 404 <laughs> I haven't made this available for download it's just something real low poly and simple but it's just a plane you could probably find other airplane models that are much more realistic so do whatever you do to load your plane in but it's just quick for example so oh bring it in <laughs> it's orientated funny let's undo the import and try again that's why you gotta check your import settings you know so, the import settings are over here. I guess I want Y forward and Z up. Yeah. In this case, I do. So, let's import the object. There we go. That's better. But the scale is huge, mongus. In this case, so let's. While everything's still selected right after import, let's scale it down. Negative scale. You want a smaller scale. So I hit zero if it fits in the scene. And let's scale it up a little bit more. There. Just something quick like that. So we have our plane in the scene, but what we want to do is get the propeller spinning real quick. So, the propeller and the blades seem to be separate parts in this model. They're very low poly aircraft models, so. Let's look at the prop hub and prop blades. So, what we want to do is make the prop blades a child of the hub, so we just drag and drop them. And now they're under the hub because they rotate around the hub. If you select the hub, its origin is at the center of the aircraft. Which we don't want, because if you were to try to animate this rotation right now, it would rotate around the aircraft's origin, which is really weird, and we don't want that. So, this is probably a problem with a lot of people trying to animate aircraft. <laughs> They're like, why is my propeller going all around my airplane? It's like, if you had a twin prop plane, your whole, it would go around the whole center of the plane. It would be really weird. Don't want that. So, what we do is we select the hub part. I guess we could, should go into edit mode on the hub. And at the very center, I'm going to hit A to deselect all. Make sure I'm in vertex selection. Right at the center, there is that little vertex right there. And right at the that ball there, or whatever you call that shape there. And what we are going to do is hit mesh, snap, and we're going to snap our cruiser to select it. In our 3D cruiser, now that it's selected, we go back to object mode. And that part is still selected, and we go up here where it says origin, click that, and origin to 3D cruiser. Now when we rotate this thing, oops, it rotates on the center like we want it to. And I can just undo, undo that, so put it back. Okay, so now we got rotation. Let's hit the N key to bring our uh, attributes. I guess rotation is. Let's see, green is the Y here. So if you look at the one you want to turn, that's Y. That's when we want to rotate. So we right click on that and add single driver. 
Okay, so now we got it set to use the driver. And we need something to control the driver. So, what else do we gotta do? We gotta add empty. And I just like to do it in cone for the empty. And I like having the cone point in a direction. So if I can snap this to 180. There, 180. And probably just move it like so. And what is the Y0? Probably scale it down a little bit. Scale it down. That cone will be our throttle. <laughs> oh, great, I'm running out of time here. I might have to redo this. Can that be quick enough? So this is our throttle controller. When we move this forward, the propeller will spin faster. And I want to go file uh, user preferences. And so interface. Trying to look. Where is it? Input file. I think it's under file. Oh yeah, auto run Python scripts. Turn that on for now because driver uses a script and it won't work without. It. So you gotta make sure you have that on, or you'll get an error message and you'll wonder why your scripting doesn't work. So we have the driver on this. Go to animation and select it. All right. Prop up. It should have a driver in here. Oh, because I'm in the F curve editor, not the. Try this out a little bit. We want to go from F curve editor to drivers. There we go. And then under here, let's hit N again to bring this menu up. And I don't think we need a scripted expression here. For our drivers, I don't think we need modifiers. So, let's call this from variable to throttle. And then we're going to add another variable, which is current frame. The throttle, you want to just like that, and I guess go back to anime or default. And what we want to do is get the it's the Y position, which in this case negative is forward. So just zero that right now. But we want to use this value, so right click here and copy data path. Go back to animation. And we want to click that part again. So throttle is. Should be throttle, right? Wait, it's a uh, wireframe. Empty. Empty it is. Empty. Y location, and I guess world space. That will work there. We don't need the data path. Although we could use the data path. 
And then current frame, we want, what is it? Scene or world? I think it is scene. Scene. And then current frame is from here. And copy data path. And scene. And control V, frame current. And then it's no longer red, so that is correct. It's my watch beeping. Let's cancel that out. I don't have to be at work till 1.45, so head out or at that time. I still have a half hour left. <laughs> so we have those two values. So what we want is throttle times current frame. I think. Oh, and rotation and uh, scripting is handled in radians. So, where is our script? Suppression is... Current frame. Times... Let's go... Throttle... Should I say native throttle? Current frame times. We'll see which way it spins first though. So now let's scrub the timeline. Or right here I guess it'll work. Well, the throttle is at zero right now. But if I were to move this forward, oh, let's do it. Which way is proper rotating? It's going the right way, I think. Or we can just hit play. But now it spins, yes. And if I go. Sometimes it just takes adjustment. But now you got a propeller that will spin based on the forward position of this empty, which represents your throttle. So the more forward it is, the faster your propeller spins. Which is pretty simple. And at some rate, it will spin so fast that you get frame rate aliasing. So you got to be aware of that. Probably notice if you apply the blur modifier in animation, it looks okay. But frame rate, frame rate aliasing means it'll look like it's spinning backwards or something. And that actually happens with real photography of spinning objects like wheels or propellers. But you can pretty much adjust this. I don't think it's a perfect thing, but I'm sure there's a few little bugs with it. And on this, I'll probably want to add a modifier. So we go into default. And not a modifier, a constraint. And I want to say limit location. I think that's it. So which one is Y here? Minimum Y is zero. Maximum Y, I don't know if we need to set that. They'll keep it from going backwards because we don't really need a reverse throttle on this model. <laughs> on something like a boat propeller, that might make sense. But for a spinning propeller in a plane, you don't reverse it. If at most you reverse the pitch on the blades, that's a whole other topic. So there you go. And with most parts on a mesh like this, you'd take the throttle and you would make it a child of a plane like this. It would probably be the fuselage. I'm going to rename this empty to throttle control and drag it under fuselage. So when you move the whole aircraft, everything moves with it. And all these other things would probably go under it too. All the aircraft parts. 
Well, I'm not going to get into that now. I'm just showing you how to get a throttle for spinning part like repeller. And what I would do is keyframe this throttle position in a timeline like it's forward and back position. And that allows you to change the throttle of the propeller during your animation. So if you're starting out an animation... Why the constraint isn't working right now? Weird. Should be limited. Oh, you know what it is? It is this should be maximum because forward in this case is negative. <laughs> Oops. There we go. Yeah, that makes more sense. Cause this model is pointing with negative values forward. So, this way is no throttle at all, but when we want to scoot our throttle forward, we have a prop that spins. And this works for turbine blades, engines, or whatever. And planes with two engines, you'd probably want two separate throttles for both the right and left engine, although you could probably have a netter object that keeps them together. Because in some cases, you might want to start one engine first and then the other. And just keyframe it so you start spinning and then rev up. But it's pretty simple. That's the way I would animate a spinning propeller on a model. Just use a driver and set it up like that. Nothing too fancy, and it should work on any airplane model you import. Just remember to set the center of your propeller <laughs> to the hub, like I showed, in any blades or parts that connect the blades, like gears. On a realistic model, it would probably have all the gears and stuff in there. And you want them to go to the hub, too. So you don't have any weird stuff not spinning or flying around or whatever. There you go. Easy peasy. Driver spins your propeller.